so this would have been 2017 uh, Pomona. Uh, kind of a tough year for Courtney, um, but that same year Robert and Brittany had standout years with their championships. At Pomona, they debuted this car. They even did a supplemental music video that's on the JFR YouTube. Really cool, it matched the reputation now. When I had some of Taylor Swift's licensed music and it was a fun project. And then they blew it up at the race. And so um, this is in our building, um, almost every car is real. This is one of a few that are replicas. We had to redo it. So drag racing really has roots in Southern California more than any other area in the world. Um, and this race here, the March meet, we don't participate anymore, um, but that's out in Kern County. Um, Kevin Harvick is probably the most recent notable guy that's involved in that area. Yeah. There's a lot of history. You might remember Speed Channel. They had the Performance Awards. It was kind of like the Oscars for racing. And uh, we won a few of those. How many trophies would you say are probably in, <laughs> like in the entire building? Well, I, it's, oh goodness, it's kind of a misleading question and you don't even know it because some are put away in archives. Uh, uh, I mean, we're talking hundreds for sure. Yeah. This one is um, a very prestigious at one point exhibition event. Um, they've had a few different rule changes and things. In our modern era, think of this um, close to the Pet Boys All-Star uh, shootout, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, call out is the, um, not exactly the same race, but um, very equivalent. And the difference was uh, with Anheuser-Busch, they kept it around forever. Um, and so the longer you have a partnership like that, the more respect and history goes into it. You're saying about Courtney's rip, was that part of it? Is that pretty much that part I've of been it? asked that about that wheel several times. I think it's just kind of a cool piece. Yeah, it is um, cool. I, I, I don't have any documentation on where that piece is from. Probably the day of it wouldn't be considered cool. You know, now looking back, pretty cool. This one's kind of cool. His 100th win was a different metal plate, different finish. And then there's another one that's a gold plate from the same weekend. Some of his grandkids. Um, which is probably the most true version of the next generation mantra that we push. Um, three of them ra have raced in the last year or so. Autumn is most notable. She races her super comp car pretty often.
most of this, um, some of them aren't, I see some hard cards, but most of this are gifts from fans. Some police badges, um, there's a s sticker there from the Bandemir family on their last race in Denver last year. Kenny Bernstein's last helmet, or one of them. And then this one's more um, kind of the John Force souvenirs really? over the year, yeah. So it's kind uh, of his personal collection? And, and, in a way, for sure. Um, you know, when he was on The Tonight Show, or <laughs> been given different, different things from folks over the years. One of his first wins, I believe that's his first Wally. Um, what, certainly one of the very early ones. And the gentleman standing next to John in the khaki outfit is Neil Bonnet, NASCAR legend. I think that um, appears to be something more custom from the partner. Yeah. Um, but in recognition of their kind of era of success. Uh, I'm not sure if that was Castrol or NHRA, or maybe a little bit of both at the time that put that piece together. And then our most recent title is here. So that's actually Brittany's trophy. 2022, right? Mm -hmm. And then the team trophy version of it is in Indy. Same work for the most part, or? Yeah, uh, just identical. Um, just maybe there's a serial number or a sticker or a signature that tells you. Um, but yeah, they're not really replicas per se, they're duplicates. Um, a replica would be a, kind of a more mild finish, maybe a cheaper metal, maybe a lighter or smaller size. But no duplicates, it's just you have to keep track of which one was the real deal. Um, and then with a Wally a duplicate, it's kind of the same thing. They don't have replica, low cost, cheaper ones, mm -hmm. but you always know there's the one they gave the driver. Yeah. <laughs> and so to know that with a Wally would be, the, there's a felt sticker on the bottom. Of course, so that was the one. <laughs> yeah, so that I guess wouldn't be one. Um, that means that maybe he gave it to a sponsor and ordered a, a duplicate. He loves Americana. I was gonna say, what's the story of this whole thing? So, um, when you go to the drag strip now, there's Sunoco Vision. Yeah. Um, and so this is actually, they used to have a Winston Cigarettes put out these, and then they would put a TV, a Jumbotron. Hmm. So he bought one, and then he put a flat screen in it. And so this is the equivalent, which here in the showroom is really nice, but a little yeah. smaller at the racetrack from a distance. Oh, sure. So the ones that we have now are really a blessing. <laughs> Everything you're looking at, uh, John is the curator. He doesn't have a designer, an interior designer. He doesn't really utilize us for help. He will ask for help once he has an idea. Yeah. Um, so this entire section is, you know, mostly American pop culture. Elvis is, without a doubt, his favorite musician. Mm -hmm. And it went into Elvis's estate with Rusty Wallace, who had a similar paint scheme with his Miller car. And then a separate time, he drove a silver car um, with Elvis on the hood. 
and I believe that was uh, another match race, maybe a night under fire or something similar. And this one is um, also a replica. We, we re rebuilt the car. Wally parked his fire suit from, um, and a safety suit. So um, in here somewhere there was a letter as well from Wally. Uh, so there's the kind of the certificate of authenticity about the suit. And then I know in here I can't see it at this moment. He wrote a letter to John, uh, more or less telling him, thanks for everything. You're the only guy that should ever run the sport. And I, I thought that was really cool. I'm not seeing it. There's so many, this is all Wally Park stuff here, but I really like that. That's right. Yeah, so um, depending on who you ask, some people will say it feels so much bigger or so much smaller. It's just kind of perspective. Yeah. Uh, but usually our male racers will sit here and then uh, Brittany will usually, what we'll do is we'll actually roll the dragster forward quite a bit and we'll sit her facing this direction. Um, so I'll show you something kind of, kind of cheesy, uh, but behind the scenes for when we film, so in order to get this dragster into the shot we want, we have to roll it all the way up to the funny cars. So we have to move the wallies. So we actually have blue painter's tape telling us which wally goes where. Oh my gosh. <laughs> kind of a, a secret of the trade. Huh. So the same if we ever need to do anything with the carpets or what have you, but we'll just move the chalk blocks and we'll roll it all the way up. And we'll give Brittany a stool and she'll stand here and talk to the camera or the reporter. We actually changed some stickers here to celebrate the second one here. Uh, but this is um, the 2017 car from her first championship. And um, the coolest way to know that, we have such a history of engineering and development, but this was an Alan Johnson motor. And you can see that I believe there's a sticker here because um, he was the lead on that program, that first championship. Uh, which was greatly celebrated. Him and Brian, they, they really pushed her to that next level. And her and her, uh, her team worked hard to get that. Um, now, obviously, if you look at the entry list, it'll say a JFR 500 motor, but that 17 year, it was an Allen Johnson motor. And then behind me here is, um, this is before my time, so I don't wanna uh, be disrespectful to the story, but probably the most important car in our museum. Uh, this is Eric Medlin's 2007 or 6 uh, Auto Club car. He lost his life in a practice crash, or a testing crash, we would refer to it. You can see I come from the Oval World. Uh, and then the statue, we have one here and one in Indy. So a number of groups, there was some government work at the time, the Ford Motor Company, I believe Goodyear and John Force Racing, they created what was known as the Eric Medlin Project, which was a safety initiative for uh, racers who compete in uh, mostly nitro racing and other drag racing circuits. And so they recreated a safer cockpit. And um, this year was really tough for our team. John, you know, experienced a pretty rough wreck. And um, I have no doubt that the safety improvements that um, were led by our organization and Eric's honor kept, kept John safe. And um, I don't believe you could wreck a NASCAR or an Indy car at 300 mile an hour and survive. No. So this is the safest yeah. race car that exists. A lot of the other cars um, are just kind of cool partnerships, yeah, more, more so than championships like this one, the Ronald McDonald House, that's their house charities for the children's hospitals. Um, I'm not sure that she won or lost in this car, those kind of moments. Yeah. Um, we just kind of celebrate that we were able to work with the kids' hospitals, you know, at one point. And that's right up Ashley's alley. She's always doing charity work and volunteering at her kid's school. So in, in hindsight, knowing that, that, that had to be her, you know. <laughs> So I mentioned John kind of curates or designs and 
Um, you can only fit so much in a room, but you can see, so that's like pop culture. Even with the race car, that's an Elvis car. That's Ma Marilyn Monroe, James Dean, Michael Jackson, Martin Luther King, obviously Elvis. Over here, this is all Robert Height. He's the president of our company, a uh, multiple time champion, obvious Hall of Famer down the road. And then the girls, you've got Eric who will always continue to support his story and legacy, Brittany, Ashley, and Courtney. So you're kind of telling the story of the family in the current design and layout of this room. This would have been um, the following year. Um, our company has celebrated achievements the following year, usually in Pomona. So she would have won Rookie of the Year honors. And then the following season, we would have celebrated with this livery or paint scheme. These two cars are a year or two or three outdated, but the sponsors, the primaries are still our partners. Peak and Auto Club obviously still play a significant role in all that we're doing. Chevrolet. They're in um, somewhat of a chronological order. Um, but you'll see um, throughout the facility, they continue. So when you walk in, you might feel like, oh, this is all of them, look at all of them. And, and it, unfortunately, it's not like that. <laughs> or maybe fortunately. Fortunately. <laughs> Over here is uh, the piano is more symbolic. Um, each of the girls learned to play piano at different times or studied it, and his wife, Lori, plays piano. I don't believe we use it, but it's yeah. more because that's a part of kind of their artistic interests. Mm -hmm. There's the other version of the 100th win that I mentioned. I mentioned Ashley was in a dog book. There's a copy of that. That's Cesar Milan. I think he's known as the Dog Whisperer. Yeah. Pretty sure of that. So he wrote a book about celebrities and their pets. And so anybody that was featured in it, they got a one of one copy with them on the cover. Mm. So Cesar is on like the mass produced cover, mm -hmm. but she got that sleeve. Really well-known story is when John beat the dragster at Bristol, mm -hmm. and so that was here. Uh, he beat Bob Vandergriff in 99 at an exhibition event. This is the driver of the year car. 
Uh, Driver of the Year was awarded by International Motorsport Media um, and nearly always went to Formula One racers. And in 96, John was the first American drag racer to re re receive Driver of the Year honors. So when they designed the tribute car, the first thing he did is said, put my crew chief's name on the car. Since then, only Greg Anderson has joined John as a drag racer to win the recognition. And then I believe the version of this award has become defunct, but Sports Illustrated and ESPN and, and other publications have tried to revive it in their own way. Mm -hmm. uh, this was the International Motorsports Press. This up here would have been Orange County. A um, lot of really cool history happened, especially with funny car history. Uh, but that would have been the first professional photo ever taken of John in a car. And that was by Rick Schutz, um, who for over 50 years has taken professional photos and he's part of the auto imagery group. So this room at one point, this was like every piece of memorabilia die cast uh, that had ever been created. Now, as our racers have accomplished more and as merchandising agreements extend, there's even more. Uh, what I love the most, and this is really important, is we all know the Force family and their great legacy. That's why many of us are here. Yeah. Uh, but we've got some Gary Denshams, some Eric Medlins, some Tony Pedregons. So some of the drivers that may not be with our organization in this era still are on display proudly because they each have this chapter that really matters. And you come up here, this would be John's car collection. The building was built in 1991. It was an Audi car dealership. And so the Force Racing team uh, purchased it and kind of revamped it to being a functioning uh, race shop. We weren't a museum at that point. One of the first things they did was they put this capsule, or <coughs> pardon me, this capsule or this roof on the top. So this was an open air car lot. Okay. And behind this garage door, there's a ramp that goes down to ground level. And so customers would come up here. The elevator was actually put in by John as well. You would take this door with a staircase. Um, but uh, when they put the roof in, they put some air conditioning and heating, which I think we must have turned off. It's a little toasty. So behind this white wall is a full service kitchen. It appears to be outside from where we're standing, but it's a kitchen for catering. Yeah. Uh, we rent out this to giant events, yeah. uh, proms, bar mitzvahs, weddings. Behind the black wall there is tables, chairs, decorations, and um, you know, 360 degree sound. It, it really turns into a different setting, but while you're up here in the daytime, it's you know Mr. Force's car collection. So a few of the notable cars, uh, this one here uh, was a rare car. I'm not sure that it was a one of one. Uh, it's a Cadillac Eldorado, and it was owned by Dale Armstrong, uh, which was Kenny Bernstein's longtime crew chief. He sold it to John, and in the back seat, you can see there's like a console piece that slides down, real common in cars now. At the time of this design, what was inside the car was perfumes and, and maybe some makeups or powder. It was kind of like the gentleman would sit up front and the ladies would freshen up in the back. Yeah. Well, when John bought it, his young daughters at the time uh, more or less wanted to play and they poured the perfumes out everywhere. Okay. So the, the two stories I've heard is one, it took like years to get the smell of the perfume because it was so potent. Yeah. Uh, and number two, I believe it really devalued the car quite a bit because it was such a rare car. So. Uh, still a beautiful piece. I think we were joking, actually, another tour this morning, a gentleman came in and he said, look at how beautiful these shark fins are. Yeah. Of course, Cadillac at the time, you know, sometimes they look like top fuel wings. Mm -hmm. They had giant wings, so these ones are kind of mild. Uh, the Ford GT, this is the 06. So uh, really known for, you know, of course, cinema, there's Ford versus Ferrari and things like that, but they rebuilt it in 06. The GT 
one of uh, what, what may, in my, in my current memory, maybe I'm forgetting something, would be the only American supercar. There was the Celine S7, and, uh, but this one uh, was taken right off the line at zero miles from the Ford Motor Company as a gift for John for his 100th win. And of course, ah, there we go. it's got its Auto Club sticker proud. So that story was pretty well known. Um, it was kind of documented that the GT was awarded to John. And so when he won his 150th, General Motors, they had to one-up it. So they have the new mid-engine Chevrolet Corvette. So they gave him twins, a red one and a white one. So the white one is at his home and the red one is here. And uh, just beautiful cars, both the, the Ford and the Chevy here up here. Now these two here are a little different. So John, uh, he's very loyal to our great partner at Chevrolet, but he collects and he tells American history in a way. John never ran a Mopar vehicle, never in his whole career. So these two pieces are kind of a way of celebrating the other great brand of Americana. Um, of course, nowadays you'll never see him drive anything other than a Chevy Silverado. Right. This one you may know, most of your audience very well might, but it was um, part of an episode of Overhauling on either TLC or Discovery with Chip Foos. And uh, feel free to step inside of it. He did a full renovation and every seat is now a uh, oval racing safety seat with I believe a five point harness, maybe a seven point harness, three point harness. I'm not familiar with my safety belt. So it's kind of like your race car. So, you know, drag motors, uh, they put out whatever it is, 10,000, 20, uh, 10,000, 12,000 horsepower, uh, whatever the motor in this was, they said, they referred to it as acclimated horsepower. Whatever it was, the weight of the bus is so much, you kind of lose it. Okay. It's similar to the wind chill or the feels like temperature. <laughs> in the rafters, you see, quite a few of the special designs. Most of the designs you see in the ceiling were part of a die cast deal with what was then known as Action Performance or Winter Circle Collectibles. Uh, and Fred Wagonoff ran that operation and so he would get these tremendous licenses and they would put them on race cars and then do the merchandise and then maybe even a race car would appear in media such as this one here. Uh, the Castrol car at the time was in an episode of King of the Hill. So John has his own episode of King of the Hill. It aired on primetime on Fox. And the storyline was that Austin Coyle needed a new kidney. Which, God love him, he does not. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's just the fun version John took to the track and the die cast, but um, it was the standard Castrol colors in the episode. another couple of cool things here. So this is the Night Stalker. I'm almost certain this was ran at Night Under Fire. Uh, but you see Forrest Brothers, so that would be John and his brother Louie. The next car, the Selena one, Tony Pedregon. Again, we always want to celebrate every racer that's been here. There's another Tony car there. One of the cars in the room, there's another Tony. And here's another Tony, so quite a few in a row. Um, I believe one of these in the ra rafters are a Gary Densham vehicle. That would be this one right here, the Popeye the Sailor car would be Gary Densham. On the big walls here, you see several fire suits, a couple that are notable. Uh, the one in the pink here, that is Mrs. Lori Force's fire suit. 
and she studied under Jack Beckman in the super comp car. And then over here, there are two that go with that. There's this light blue one on the far end. And there's this black and white one. It kind of looks incomplete uh, in, in a way. And those are the suits that the young ladies wore in the photo shoot for the old TV show Driving Force, which is in this media banner here. Of course, Ashley had partners at the time, uh, and as did John, so they were racing at the professional level. The other two girls were up and coming. Lori never competed, but did learn the sport in that way, in addition to whatever else she did growing the business with John. But their fire suits, those are the original ones from media with the TV show. And then this one over here is very different. Um, we really pride ourselves in our relationship with uh, General Motors, and at one point we did have a partnership with the Ford Motor Company, but that's really all John's worked with. And so he did race in the Long Beach Grand Prix. It's the only time anybody in his family ever raced for a foreign nameplate. Uh, and so that's a charitable race. And so um, that was the one time, just that one race in Toyota. Obviously we've been with Chevy now for about 11 straight years some of his championship jackets and big bonus championships over the years come with jackets. Feel free to kind of, if you want, I'll turn a few of them. You can see how the designs in 90 have changed. Totally Pretty, different. that's like a windbreaker, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, maybe more of a le leather jacket the next year. And then 10 years later, yeah, I think Ricky you know. Bobby wrote, wrote, wore yeah. that. <laughs> I think that, that was the yeah. same one Will Ferrell wore. <laughs> So. Like same design, everything. Yeah, they kind of, kind of evolved over time. There's Linda Vaughn. I'm not sure of the background on that one. Now it's mostly a museum, but you. This used to be the main area for. This, this would be it. Yeah, we would back a semi through that big door. We would load it up and then make the most awkward of U-turns to leave the property because it's really tight back there. Uh, almost every car you see here is a real race used car. And then I mentioned with Courtney's Rookie of the Year car, we would paint them to celebrate what we had just accomplished cool. in either the off season or recently. The car to your left is John's uh, most recent championship, his 16th. It was also the first car with peak and the last car with Castrol. Uh, so they worked with each other to uh, kind of co-brand. This would be Ashley's 2004 A-Fuel National Championship. It was owned by uh, Darian and, and Ken Meadows, who just passed away just two weeks, three weeks ago. Um, he was a local guy out of Yorba Linda here and really helped some folks. That group, they did, um, I believe Morgan Lucas drove this car, Ashley did. I know there were some other notables that I'm drawing a blank on. Of course, she had that deal with Mattel and she had her own Barbie doll. Yep. You can still buy it at the Nitro Mall. So these, uh, I, I'm almost certain these are all replicas, uh, but they are awfully detailed, so much so that if you look at the right front tire, it says Goodyear and white stickers. Um, our shop foreman here, Shane, actually goes out of his way to make sure the logos on the tires are the correct era and color. So uh, the font is a slightly different Goodyear than maybe what would be on a yellow slick today. This one here was a 1977. It was his first pro car, the gray one and the blue one would have been the next one, the orange. It was always brute force. The best way I can describe that is kind of like monster trucks. They were known by the car identity. You know, you've got Gravedigger and Monster Mutt. Well, this was brute force. The car had as much identity as the drivers at that time. We still use that name today, even Beckman driving for John right now in the peak car. It still says Jack Beckman, of course, but it says John Brute Force. Okay. 
all of his first half, maybe first third of his career were with the General Motors partnerships, Chevy's, and uh, then we did have a tenure with Ford and now the return to Chevy for the final chapter of his career has been a lot of fun. So he had a partner out of Columbus, Ohio, Wendy's, and he's had Coca-Cola and Mountain Dew, and um, other racers have experienced something similar. So um, it's my understanding that whatever he ran was regional because Wendy's was not always Coke. Now all of the Wendy's locations are Coca-Cola, but they would run Coke or Mountain Dew stickers based on what Wendy's in that area sold. My favorite story about this one, and you'll pardon me, I, I cannot recall the year, um, but the empire we now know of John uh, wasn't always that. It was, it was a, a man and a woman fighting to develop this business, this family legacy. So uh, I would call it mid-1980s, where one of the years Daryl Waltrip won the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship and they brought him out to uh, LA and John to do a car show and celebrate Daryl's championship because Daryl had one drive in for Mountain Dew. Yeah. And at the end of the show, Daryl took his flight and he went to Charlotte and the Mountain Dew or Pepsi executive said, John, would you do us a favor? Can you take this car and put it in your shop and store it and we'll pay for a truck to come pick it up soon? And John said, yeah, of course, I'd love that. Well, John didn't have a shop, he had a driveway. He had a house in the next town over called Placentia. And so uh, him and his brother Louis drove the car all over town. The, and there, there were not uh, show cars in that era. They were driving a real NASCAR. And um, can you imagine if somebody drove a NASCAR stock car around town now? Of course, this one's a Corvette. Don Steve Chevy was with us for a long time. Probably really the final era where it looked like a car. Mm -hmm. It, it kind of still looks like a Corvette. Yeah, you can definitely tell, yeah. And then, of, of course, uh, you know, you see the more modern cars and they really live up to the name Funny because they're, they're pretty goofy looking, but we still love them. And then a couple of junior dragsters, because John would hate me if I didn't show him. He loves his grandkids. So this is for his boys, Jacob and Noah. Noah actually won the four wide race at Vegas at one point over significantly older uh, children. He was only four or five at the time. And so uh, him and Jacob, they, they run slightly different setups and different work, but uh, they paint them the same way. If you can tell, they're just inverted where the camouflage is, kind of like the Torrances do with their colors, but, but more or less the same paint design. And then uh, just back here, you can kind of see like what used to be. Uh, not th we still use this, we still build some things here and there, but not necessarily for the race car. But this would have been uh, at one point one of the nicest workspaces in all of the NHRA. And, and now with all due respect, just a little outdated. Um, but it's just funny how time evolves.